Break Fix's History of Motorsports series is brought to you in part by the International Motor Racing Research Center, as well as the Society of Automotive Historians, the Watkins Glen Area Chamber of Commerce, and the Argetsinger family. Racing as a Paradigm for Pursuing the Best by Mario Felice Tecce. Dr. Tecce received his MD and PhD at the University of Naples in Italy and is currently full professor of biochemistry at the University of Salerno. Besides his molecular research about cancer mechanisms, he explored race car driving as a major reference paradigm of pursuing the best and of free will exercise. Having a strong interest and deep passion for car racing, he analyzed Formula One seasons of the last 50 years and suggests that race car driving can be a major example of general life choices between good and bad in a joint competition to pursue the best possible. Ladies and gentlemen, the next presentation that is up is Mario Tecci from Naples, Italy, joining us remotely from Naples. And his presentation is Racing as a Paradigm for Pursuing the Best. Mario, it's all yours. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bob. And actually, I have to say that good morning to everybody. That is very, very nice for me to be here, even if in a remote connection. And I want to thank you, Bob, and you, Arget uh, Singer, and uh, Paul Baxa, but also all other organizers for allowing me to be here. I'm going to talk to you about race car driving and how this activity can be an example of doing good. But before starting, I would just like to show a picture of where I work. And here is uh, my teaching building at my university. And I'm proud to show you the name of the building is F1. It's, uh, so you can see, I'm very, very happy to work in a place which is called F1, if, if it is just a numbering of our building. But I like to think that it's because I'm a Formula One enthusiast. Now, coming to the team, I'm going to try to analyze with you race car driving, mostly race car driving and driving. Race car driving is something which is made of two things, car development and driving. Obviously, during a race, the most important thing is driving, but before that, even the human action of car development is important. The point is uh, to talk about driving and uh, try to, to demonstrate that this is a positive activity. To do that, I will try to answer essentially three different questions. First of all, what is race driving? Is driving is getting obsolete? And finally, if driving is uh, something good or bad. Starting from that, I, I like to use this image. Uh, you, you see this image is racing in the 60s. Actually, it's a picture fact taken from a movie, Grand Prix. Look into this image. I also like to remember the last driver which used leather gloves. And this, uh, this was Francois Sever. And actually, I like to remember him even because he won in Watkins Green in 1971. Also, we have to remember that he died in the same track uh, two years later. So uh, even this example gives us uh, the idea that racing is something that can be, can be very nice uh, when you think about winning of a driver, but also something which is uh, connected to the, the debt. Uh, so this is something which sometimes was questioned about the value of uh, racing, if racing was something good um, or bad. But let's go to the first question. What is driving? We can say that driving generally, even beyond car driving, is an effort to achieve a particular objective. And when it's done, implies making choices before acting. While it is car driving, will be steering, braking, accelerating, but one has to decide when and how to steer, when and how to brake. So it is making a choice and then acting. In general, human activities is done of choices and action. And they can be good or bad. The same can be for driving. I would like to say that driving is just an occasion within our life to be good and to do good. And then we have to evaluate if this uh, it is like that, if it is good or if it is not good. Now, comparing what it is race car driving versus usual car driving, which is uh, what uh, most of us, most of us are passionate, are enthusiastic about car racing, but most of us you know, just look at car racing. What is the relationship between race car driving and usual car driving? I think it's just a 
quantitative relation. I mean, the differences are just quantitative. I have a question which is still from this movie, which I like a lot. I think it's very, very important in this progressing. It is Grand Prix from Jean Frankenheimer, and a movie of 1966, which I think influenced what was the perception of racing even in the following years, probably even today. There is this character of this movie, which are why it is so marvelous to go very fast. It's a simple question. It's about a character which didn't know anything about racing, which was just plainly asking that. Is it because speed is associated with hazard and violence? And this is something which as often brings the bad judgment about racing, the violence, the danger, the deaths. It is really the goal of, of racing, what it comes from speed. Or another possible answer is speed is marvelous because it can give a special feeling of achievement, of doing that best, even if this brings some violence. But this is not the goal. It's just something which has to be taken, has to be accepted to try to get this special achievement. Race car driving is competition. Competition, obviously, is something which you can find in many other aspects of life. But it is race car driving is competition. What is competition? Competition is try to do the best possible using as reference other participants. At competition, I need other racers. I cannot race alone. I need the other racers as reference. And if we want to remember the origin of this word, the origin is from two Latin words, which are cum petere, which is searching together, cum, for the best. So competition is something which is not doing against others, but together. You cannot do competition, you cannot race without other racers. Next question, is car driving and also then race car driving became obsolete years? We will see autonomous vehicles substituting traditional cars. We will likely use cars like now we use elevators. We're just uh, saying where we want to go and they will do everything for us. What about driving then? Not obsolete, it will be uncommon. Comparison can be made uh, with uh, horse riding. I mean, 100 years ago, every I mean, most people was uh, riding horses. Now there are still races about people riding horses, but it is very uncommon to find a person able to, to ride an horse. So the what to have to race car driving? Probably race car driving will continue, but the difference will be there will not be normal drivers. We will not drive our cars. So it will be difficult to identify ourselves with drivers. But driving and race car driving will still be an occasion to do something good or bad. So uh, this is our, our major question. Is race car driving something good or something bad? In the past, especially when big accidents, big uh, amount of deaths were seen in races, and, uh, now it is uh, more rare because uh, there is more safety in racing. And thanks to God, there is more safety. Some, in the past, race car driving was considered very bad. I think, I mean, we should finally, I, should, I hope to convince you finally that private driving and race car driving can be good or bad as most human action. There is not a general answer, but everything can be good or bad. And then uh, we go back I mean, to, to a major question, what makes human actions good or bad, including also racing? Maybe it's a, my hypothesis that doing good is what we do according to our nature. My idea is that we are naturally aimed to do good. To convince you about that, I will try to look to some examples in car racing. The first example from which I want to start is about Gilles Villeneuve, a big racer, champion. I think it was a very important example of uh, living to be good and to do good. Always striving to to do the best, even exceeding. I have to, these two images about him. Yeah, this is a famous picture from a great Italian photographer, which is uh, Ercole Colombo. And you see her driving uh, a race in 1981, even trying to do maybe more than it is possible, always trying to do the best. He was not a crazy man, like somebody was uh, saying. He was just 
always trying to do the best, even if it was very difficult, even if his car was not uh, adequate. And then on the right, you see his fatal accident in 1982. His life, his way of living, his way of racing, his personality is an example of somebody believing that the goal of life is firstly to do good. And I think this, this is an example of faith, faith in the goal of life, which is an example of faith. And I remember talking to an audience in Watkins Glen, I, I cannot skip to remember his uh, special win in 1979 in Watkins Glen. He was first, he won. More importantly, he did an incredible driving that weekend on the Friday of that weekend, of the last weekend. It was nine seconds faster than anyone else. And this is, it was an awful day, or very bad weather, but he, he still tried and uh, he, he did the best. It was nine seconds faster, something even at, at that three times, very special. This was obviously including his uh, teammate, Jody Schachter, who just won the, the championship in that year. And might be a way to show that Possibly he deserved more than him, the championship. But he was uh, a special man and he, he didn't challenge his uh, teammate uh, on, that, on that year. And now, looking to this Ferrari of 1979, I cannot uh, forget Enzo Ferrari. He is the man who was able to put chassis and the engines from the beginning of 60 for almost 30 years. A very, very special man left us but is still with us i mean in our thoughts looking to, to do good to be good i want to remember what allows us to do good and these are the fundamental virtues uh, first of all virtues are can be defined as, as usual and stable disposition to do good i will show you that we can easily often recognize them in race car driving there are seven they are the Three major virtues, which are faith, hope, and love, which are the most important, allowing to select the goals of life, which are the first to be used in this three. But then to realize our goals, we need these cardinal virtues, which are four, prudence, justice, fortitude, and temperance. Let's start from faith, hope, and love. And the first example I want to show you is a very special man, Bruce McLaren. Very special driver, but also one driver who was also able to win with a car built from his factory. He was both car constructor and a special driver. And I want to show you the words which he pronounced in this eulogy of his teammate who died mayor in 1964. Who is to say that he had not seen more, done more, and learned more in his 26 years than many people do in a lifetime? I feel that life is measured in achievement, not in years alone. I like this way to celebrate. He was uh, losing a friend, a teammate, but he was not questioning racing. And I think this is an example of determination to win, even taking every, every risks even of dying. But this doesn't need to be to have a complete unawareness of life values. I don't consider people like him very because he died a few years later. He was not a crazy man because he was taking risks. Doesn't mean that he didn't realize he could die or didn't give a value to uh, his life. It was just that he was looking to this major goal, to do good. This is the starting read in Imola 1994. He was going to die a few minutes after the start. And uh, it was a very sad week. And uh, the day before, another driver, Roland Lachsratzenberger, died in the same track. He was there and he was uh, still determined to race, uh, determination to win. Together with this uh, image, I like to show this other image of 1993, the day before in Donington where he did uh, probably the uh, most important first lap of race, an incredible lap. He overtook a lot of other cars, uh, won the race, uh, and uh, his car was not absolutely not the best car. He was a special driver, and he had faith in the idea that he had to do good, to do the best. Switching to hope, first example I want to give you is uh, 
very recently, a special and recent writer, Lewis Hamilton, still choosing to go do anyway. I, I like to remember still in the United States, uh, 2015 US Grand Prix in Austin. Actually, he won the race, but this was the final practice session. The, the, the weather was awful that day. It was very, very difficult, and he was still the fastest and much more than any other, trying to do the best, not having any fear, and uh, doing it. Way to talk about hope, but more than that, the major example of hope that I want to show you is this, uh, this other Formula One driver, Gunnar Nilsson, a Swedish driver. He was driving for Lotus Team in 1976 and 1977. He was a very good driver. He was able to win a Grand Prix in 1977 and probably was going to have a very good career. But sadly, his career was stopped from cancer. Very, very active in starting a Cancer Research Foundation, which is still acting now. He wasn't able to drive. He was not able to win. Actually, he was uh, supposed to drive in 1978. Lotus, uh, 78 was a uh, winning Lotus, actually. This was the year in which uh, Mario Andretti won the championship. He instead, he dedicated this 1978 to start this Cancer Research Foundation. Uh, somebody say even uh, avoiding uh, therapies to be able to work more on this project. I think this is an example of hope. About the major virtues, now the third one to talk about is love. And now I want to talk about Jackie Stewart. Jackie Stewart is uh, three times world champion, and uh, there is no, not that much to say about him. He's a very famous, very well-known, very, very special driver. I just want to remember here, the year 1973, where he won his third championship with Tyrrell. And here is in Monza, and it was an incredible day for him. He was supposed to easily win his championship because he needed just a few points, but he had a puncture. He had a puncture, and at that time, this was not a usual thing to stop or tire change. He exited from the pits as last and then did an incredible driving and was finally making a lot of overtakes, driving in a very incredible way. He was able to finish fourth and win the championship. It was an incredible day. I still remember that day. This is 73. Now, there's another picture of him is many, many years later, in 2019. He's still here. Another blue car. This is not the theater. This is the Matra by which he won the championship in 1969. There are two other cars with his sons following him, which are the two cars by which he won the other two championships. You see here he stops in this uh, Goodwood Festival. He stops his car, two images, which are related to the same person. They're very similar. They're very related. In both occasions, he's doing his best to do good, to be good and to do good. Finally, now I want to talk of the other four virtues still in racing. And to talk about these four other cardinal virtues to get the fastest possible lap time in Monza. This is the track of Monza, and it is the start-finish line. Let's start, look, uh, just to get to this start-finish, a start, a good lap, we have to make uh, the best possible way the curva parabolica, the parabolica turn, it's also called the alboreto turn, to remember the other uh, big driver. To do the best parabolica, we need prudence. What is prudence? It is the virtue to distinguish true good in every situation, making the right choices. It is not fear. It is not diffidence. How can you use prudence here? to choose the best measure of braking and accelerating. This is a turn which opens gradually. So it has to be started, obviously braking before the turn, but then gradually accelerating. So it has to be continually, continually adjusted, the, the right braking and the right acceleration. So to do the sub best, we need prudence. Then going to the start finish straight and then we are now getting through the start finish line we need justice this is a portion of the track where the driving ability is not very important only the power of the engine is giving you the highest speed but now it is important to prevent any risk 
I mean, there are a lot of rules to can overtake, especially in these days. But before any rule, there is the justice to be used. What is justice? It is the determination to respect the rights of those that have a relationship with us. So a driver in this point of the track has to consider either overtaking or defending the position to prevent any risk. And this is the need to, for just justice. Then we reach the first chicane. First chicane is a point where there is a very big braking to be done from about 340 kilometers per hour, which is 210 miles, to about 80, which is about 50 miles per hour. So a very big braking obviously has to be done correctly because uh, getting through this chicane, there is this curva grande, which is done essentially as a, as a straight. And so it is important to make it uh, at the best at the highest possible speed. Then to do this braking at the best, we need fortitude, which is the virtue that guarantees determination in difficulties trying to do good. We will use that to wait the right moment to break hard, very, very hard to, to change this speed. And then going over again to the next two important points of the track, we get to this Variante della Roggia and then to the Les Motars. Again, going through the Variante della Roggia, we need fortitude. Again, to properly break and then get to the Lesmo curve in the best possible time. Again, les motards are need prudence because they are very fast. These two men, these start to lesmo curves, turns, and only moderate braking is necessary to get at the fastest possible speed to the next straight, which is bringing us to the variante Ascari. Here, the virtue which is important is temperance. What is temperance? Is this the virtue that moderates wishes and provides an appropriate balance using goods? Here, it is uh, important to moderate the impulse of overspeeding. Why? Because, uh, I mean, this is a very fast track. All, all Monza track is a very fast track. But uh, at this point, the risk is to enter at a too high speed. Entering at, at the too high speed in this uh, variante scale, essentially, are three different uh, turns uh, left and right and left turns. And then entering to, uh, at a too high speed makes you exit too slow. So it is necessary to moderate wishes, I mean, to moderate the impulse of overspeeding to get again to the next state, which brings again, again to the parabolica to complete our lab. So during the Monza lap, we needed all the four cardinal virtues. Concluding our main speech, I hope to have given you some ideas uh, that, uh, about the, the fact that driving in the fastest way, driving in, uh, while racing, is a possible way to live to be good and to good at best. And then this means also properly targeting to the future. But the point is, uh, living to be good and to do good is the goal of life. I mean, the goal of our life is this. I, I, this is my idea. Obviously, this is a personal. I can just give you uh, some other examples of this uh, way of thinking. And I will use the words of uh, Dante Alighieri in his Divine Comedy, when uh, Ulysses asks his fellows not to miss the chance to explore the unknown world to go over. And uh, I read the words, we are original Italian words, but uh, I will read you the English translation. And these are, consider the seed that gave you birth. You were not made to live as brutes, but to be followers of virtue and knowledge. So knowledge, knowledge is uh, something which comes from the study, from the experience, which allows us, which drives us in our choices. As a last image, again, I would like to indicate you this driver, which is in my heart, as Gilles Villeneuve, as an example, uh, I mean, uh, one of the major examples in racing of uh, living to do good and to be good. And uh, giving you a citation, which is from St. Paul, a citation which is aimed to everybody, but seems particularly fit for racers. And that is, uh, 
Do you not know that the runners in the stadium all run in race, but only one wins the prize, runs to as to win? Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Mario. Thank you very much. <laughs> this episode is brought to you in part by the International Motor Racing Research Center. Its charter is to collect, share, and preserve the history of motorsports, spanning continents, eras, and race series. The center's collection embodies the speed, drama, and camaraderie of amateur and professional motor racing throughout the world. The center welcomes serious researchers and casual fans alike to share stories of race drivers, race series, and race cars captured on their shelves and walls and brought to life through a regular calendar of public lectures and special events. To learn more about the center, visit www.racingarchives.org. This episode is also brought to you by the Society of Automotive Historians. They encourage research into any aspect of automotive history. The SAH actively supports the compilation and preservation of papers, organizational records, print ephemera and images to safeguard, as well as to broaden and deepen the understanding of motorized, wheeled land transportation through the modern age and into the future. For more information about the SAH, visit www.autohistory.org. We hope you enjoyed another awesome episode of Break Fix Podcast, brought to you by Grand Tory Motorsports. If you'd like to be a guest on the show or get involved, be sure to follow us on all social media platforms at Grand Touring Motorsports. And if you'd like to learn more about the content of this episode, be sure to check out the follow-on article at gtmotorsports.org. We remain a commercial-free and no annual fees organization through our sponsors, but also through the generous support of our fans, families, and friends through Patreon. For as little as $2.50 a month, you can get access to more behind-the-scenes action, additional pit stop minisodes, and other VIP goodies, as well as keeping our team of creators fed on their strict diet of Fig Newtons, Gumby Bears, and Monster. So consider signing up for Patreon today at www.patreon.com forward slash GT Motorsports. And remember, without you, none of this would be possible.